NBA is back, baby. Let me tell you, NBA is back. I want to make one thing clear. Bro, I don't even know where to start. I'm so high right now. When I see LeBron coming through with the, uh, 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 uh. Bro, few things, just a few key points to go over about the NBA. That is fact. Some things I know, some things I want to talk about. I'm super happy you see me jumping through the screen. But my girl on the other hand, my fiance, she gonna be mad. <laughs> she over the kid for basketball. Not that mean late nights, the TV screen on, so she trying to sleep. It's gonna be nothing but flashing light. Can you turn the TV off? They like, I could turn it down. I can't dim the TV no more. It's already on the most dim setting I got. I'm sorry, but it's LeBron. I'm watching the game. Feel me? That is that's point number one. I'm sorry, babe, in advance, but uh, NBA season's back, so hello. It's crazy because when you watch basketball, you don't really notice that. But the sneakers be squeaking, squeak, 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 squeak. But me as kind of like a, a engineer and whatnot, sometimes you you know you gotta listen to certain sounds. And I've sat in there and watched a game, and when you really focus on it, it do be a lot of sneaker squeak. But it's like you in the game, so your brain just block it out. I be kind of feeling bad, cause then I be noticing them like it's like it's like when you a little kid, you try to go to the fridge and, and, and open the door, and you try not to wake nobody up or your parents up or whatever. And it's like it's it's like the smallest sound makes the biggest noise now. It's like. My bad, like you just hope that each one they don't hear. Of course, that's gonna be late night games, probably. Hopefully, not as late as usual. But you know, I'm a Brown fan, Brown on the West Coast now, so they games be going to like one in the morning. As selfish as it is of the thing that I'm glad that the NBA is back. Let's get to the buck for my boy Brown. Brown, Brown, LeBron James. My boy, you about to get ring number four. You feel me? Ring number four. He gonna be one behind Kobe, one behind Magic, gonna be two behind Jordan. He already one of the greatest ever do it, no matter what you say. Rain count or not. Player wise, put him on any team. That team automatically going to the playoffs. He's proven that. And that, I, this is a little bone I like to pick actually. Everybody always like, every time I see social media, everybody wanna point out, oh, they made it to the playoffs last year. Whoa, 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 they forget. First or second on the in the West Conference last year. Until they got hurt around on that Christmas Day game. At which I believe they beat the Warriors, if I'm not mistaken. But still, most games he missed due to injury in his whole entire career. Maybe 17 games. I like Jordan got hurt in his like second year of his foot. You can't really hold that against people because you know, you play the sport, that's what happened. But they like to act like they weren't in the playoff picture already. Oh, they didn't miss the playoff. Yeah, of course they didn't have a bronze. Now, rightfully so, in kind of as a crush to LeBron, you go, oh, well, now they're in the playoffs even if without LeBron because they got AD. Well, yes and no. Yes, because AD is that good of a player, so he should be a bonus. If anything, he alone should be able to ideally get them in the playoffs. But if you pair LeBron and AD, what is that saying? That's saying that should be guaranteed playoffs. Even if for some reason they didn't win, that should be automatically perennial playoff team. Yeah, so you can't hold that against LeBron and be like, oh, no, they only need playoffs because they got AD. First of all, every team he's been on, he's brought that team to the playoffs and actually to the championship. Cleveland, Miami, back to Cleveland, automatically. Well, except for Lakers, obviously, because he only been up there two seasons. So... Let's put some respect on LeBron James' name, you feel me? Speaking of putting respect on his name, let's respect your elders. Cause LeBron out there, he don't got the 24 seven, you know, fitness team with him. And when I say fitness, I'm not talking about his physical fitness. Cause he, he, he ate one with that. I'm talking about his, his makeup fitness, his, his appearance fitness, his, his cosmetic appearance. There we go. His, co his cosmetic fitness. LeBron can't just do cosmetic. He gotta do cosmetic fitness. You feel me? And he said, you know what? You know what? Y'all already know about the hairline. Y'all already know about the bald spot. That's fair. That's whatever. I ain't got it. Spring on junk afterwards. Cool. No problem. Guess what? I'm gonna let the beard ride. Now he got the grays on the side. 35 years old. Playing like he 23. Stop playing with this man out here. He is going crazy. He up there on the court. All you see is the grays on the side. He ain't got Beijing or whatever you call it or whatever they got with the Kai Jack flow on the box. He out there letting it rock out natural and showing them, hey, I'm almost your grandpa with here and I still bust it. You know what, all right? 
So with that being said, just put some respect on his name in the beard. Now, a big thing that was talked about, first thing everyone want to talk about is, well, how's it going to be with the game getting back in the situation in the bubble? I want the NBA to come back regardless. Of course, you know, I want them to be healthy and stuff, because that's the most important with coronavirus still going on. It's not going to just disappear at this point, like we thought maybe it could. But the big thing about the bubble is, everybody was like, well, how's it going to be? Uh, they talked about putting in like fake crowd noise, things like that. And uh, of course, the crowd itself not being able to be there. And the crowd definitely does make, even as a musician, a crowd makes a difference for performance, for whatever you do. Watching this game, I noticed that they said they pumped in like fake crowd noise. Like even watching the game, it doesn't make that big a difference. It's pretty similar. Of course, you see like, you know, there's not that many people as much as the regular arena, obviously. Even their bench was an interesting thing because they had the bench where it was kind of like two or three rows and obviously it was spaced like probably six feet apart. So it was like almost like football bleachers, but just chairs placed out in that way. And I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. But with the crowd noise, I mean, it really didn't make that much of a difference. I mean, it seemed like an AAU game or like a summer league game, really. But as a fan, I mean, it's actually just like you're watching an AAU game or a summer league game. It's, it's still interesting, especially because basketball is my choice. So with that, a few of the things that I noticed. First, the, the thing has been made about the home court situation, and it's just the NBA logo in the middle. Uh, I don't know if they'll switch it up or they'll keep it that way. I'm assuming they'll probably keep it that way because they talked about not really having home court advantage. I mean, I know the practice courts had each team individual logo on it, but right above that, they have uh, Black Lives Matter. And I think that's definitely really cool. And I think it, it stands out because maybe a month or two at this point ago, when they were debating of should the league come back, will it distract from Black Lives Matter movement and the protests and things like that. My personal opinion was the league isn't gonna start until late July, August. That's like two, three months from now. Physical protests of being outside, I don't think would still be going on at that point. And at that point, it was like a protest, you know, like every Saturday, every Sunday type of thing. And even at this point now, in the middle of July, we don't see as many physical protests in the streets, but you still do hear about things in the media, of course, from activists, you know, making their voices heard and then going to even like the players who are using their, their platform and their time to say, like Tobias Harris, for example, was a fan like, first off, I wanna say we need justice for Breonna Taylor. All right, so I had to change it up. Uh, the light was getting real hot and just like shut up on me. So with the Black Lives Matter logo being placed right above the NBA logo, I think it's still a good point because as I was talking about before, a lot of players were saying, well, some of them like Kyrie and a couple other players and Dwight and for good reason was worried about if it would distract from the movement that was at that point a couple months ago, but is still going strong. And even at this point now, the protests aren't really going on like every weekend, like at, well, at one point it was because at one point where I worked, it was like right there, like every weekend, honestly. Now it's not physically every weekend, but you still see a lot of the conversation in a lot of different places. Not just in typical like news and things, but like morning shows, uh, see a course on social media, any major show you watch or talk show or thing like that, it's still a big talking point, which is without a doubt, like a great thing to know that the movement is still going strong because it's very important. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's keeping those topics at the forefront, I should say, that's the better way to say it. But, you know, things like that, again, the Black Lives Matter movement and then the protests in general are still all being put at the for forefront. But my opinion at the time was, I thought the NBA wouldn't take away from the movement. One, because, I mean, it's not like, just because basketball comes back, we'll be so distracted that you forget, like, I'm not sitting there like, oh, basketball's back. I forgot I'm black, like, it doesn't work like that, you know? I mean, the basketball game is only on for like two hours, maybe two hours and a half, if that. So, I mean, you still got 24 hours in my case of being black. So I get what they were saying because they didn't want it to take away. And I think that is a great point. But I think for the time that it was at its peak as far as physical marches and things like that, I think it couldn't, it came at a better time. And I think just in general, with the whole situation of 
being trapped in the house for three, four months. And then, you know, all the things that went on with, again, like the situation with Breonna Taylor, the murder of Breonna Taylor, and uh, the, the killing and the murder again of George Floyd. I think that brought a time of like, hey, you have no excuse but to come out and, and physically show your support. If you're a performer or whatever, like if you're doing a show, you have people saying, oh yeah, yeah, you know, oh yeah, yeah, I support you. But then it's like, well, will you listen to my music or will you come see me perform? Will you like actually do the minor things that at least like literally show that you're supporting me? And I think that was a, a important thing for the movement. So it left it where it's like, hey, all this use of, oh no, I'm busy this week or I'm going out. Like, no, there's nowhere to go. But um, yeah, I think the Black Lives Matter uh, statement on the court, I still think that was a great move. Um, great by the NBA Players Association to ask for that or demand that. And then great, of course, for the NBA as a league, which you hear it all the time if you're in the sports. The thing that's been tossed around now is the NBA is like the best league as far as being a progressive league. And I think that's definitely kudos to the league itself. Again, the, the NBA Player Association and obviously Adam Silver, the commissioner. All right, this video is gonna be really, really choppy. My lights keep going out, so I'm gonna have to buy a new one. But it's crazy because I didn't really know what I was gonna talk about until I started watching the scrimmage. And from that, I went from basketball to now, you know, again, the murder of uh, Breonna Taylor and the efforts of the Black Lives Matter movement, which I think is proving the point originally that well, even with the bas with basketball coming back, it's not taken away from everything that is trying to be achieved and will be achieved. But it just shows that if you do keep things that are important or at the forefront, the message will spread. And uh, I think that's the best part of what's, what's going on, especially in the year 2020, where this year has been a year that as you get older, you'll be like, that's one of those years you can't forget. Again, bring it back full circle with the NBA, Kobe passing away. I remember that day. And then obviously, you know, time goes on and then start hearing about Corona. And then out of nowhere, it's like, yeah, so the world's gonna shut down for a little bit. At least for people of my generation, we've we've dealt with, I was in first grade when 9-11 happened. And that was kind of probably one of the first major things that we knew of that disrupted the way natural day-to-day -day things went on. So with that, and then coronavirus situ pandemic situation, those are two things, at least in my lifetime, that are really disrupted the like natural flow of life or daily life as we know it. Somehow, some way, life really does go on. I think the good thing about it is, because I always try to find the positive, is that you definitely find a way to, to grow from it. Um, a lot of people started businesses during this down point, uh, started learning skills, learning things. You know, why you had all this free time? It's like, well, better yourself. Is there something you want to learn? Now's the time to do it. And for me, during the pandemic, like the height of it, I, I basically did what I was doing before. I was working on music and things like that. But I think it's now that it's at the tail end. You can't really force yourself and be mad at you not being at a certain point if that wasn't the time that was meant for you to be there. You know what I'm saying? Everything falls into place as it should, as long as you're pushing. During times of stress, during times of uncertainty, during times of not knowing what's what's gonna be the outcome of life in general, you find a way to keep going. And whether that's you learn something new, at the end of the day, you adapt. Hopefully you adapt and you just start something new, become a new a new person, learn a new skill. Always try to have a positive outlook. But um, long story short, I'm, I'm ready for this NBA season. Ready for LeBron to have ring number four. Let's talk about it. Put in the comments who you think I'm gonna win in the NBA bubble. Uh, any comments, social justice things. Uh, again, justice for Breonna Taylor. LeBron James taking over the NBA as usual. Going to get that championship ring number four. Let's go. Uh, hit me up on social media, TJ Productions, audio, Facebook, and Instagram, SoundCloud. Y'all know where to find me. It's not that hard. But uh, see you guys in the next one. Thanks for the time. Peace.